Welcome to the IQT Podcast. I'm Kevin O'Connell, your host for today's episode. Some longtime listeners, for you, welcome back. And you may remember you may remember hearing from me in past episodes covering the early days of COVID-19 and other bio-focused episodes covering various aspects of synthetic biology. But our topic today is the very important executive order signed on the 12th of September that lays out an extensive policy vision for the role that the federal government will play in supporting the U.S. bioeconomy. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Tara O'Toole and Eugene Chu, who with me are members of BNEXT, the arm of IncuTel, responsible for thought leadership and investments at the intersection of biotech, health, and national security. So um, let's just jump right in and, uh, and start with the executive order. So section one, <clears throat> uh, the, the very first, the, at the beginning of the, uh, of the order, um, lays out the, uh, the top level uh, description. Uh, it's, it is the policy of the administration to coordinate a whole of government approach to advance biotechnology and biomanufacturing towards innovative solutions in health, climate change, energy, food security, agriculture, supply chain resilience, and national and economic security. That is a very broad uh, mandate. Uh, and it's not, as you, as you read through it, the document, you realize it's not just a statement of intent or of policy, it tasks numerous agencies to plan to incorporate biotech and biomanufacturing into their mission plans. In about six months, all of the agencies that are listed in the, in the, uh, in the order are responsible to report back to the White House, uh, which will take all of their inputs and craft an all of government strategy. Uh, this is pretty remarkable. So let me open it up uh, for introductory comments and, and uh, um, and uh, and responses from Tara and Eugene. <clears throat> Thank you, Kevin. Well, I think this is an unusually good executive order, both because it's very comprehensive and because it includes tasking and accountability mechanisms to make sure the government actually responds to President Biden's intent. Um, it is very broad, um, but uh, the applications of biotechnology and biomanufacturing are very broad. And I think the motivation behind it is to ensure that the U.S. economy is competitive um, and indeed a leader in biotechnology and biomanufacturing. And uh, the EO is set up so that government basically leads by example. It tasks all the agencies that you mentioned um, with coming up with a very specific plan to meet certain important goals and address certain critical problems. Um, so I am very excited by this. I think it's a great job. Previous administrations have tried to put out a blueprint or a roadmap for the bioeconomy, but this is, I think, the best effort yet. Absolutely, there's a big there's a big difference between uh, uh, between a blueprint and an executive order. The the thou shalt piece of this is what really gives it some teeth and some importance. I agree with Tara. This is uh, quite remarkable as an executive order. Uh, I was particularly impressed by uh, the. Uh, paragraph within the executive order, which describes the foundational scientific capabilities that are important in biotechnology and biomanufacturing, in particular referencing genetic engineering technologies and techniques uh, in the ability to write circuitry for cells and the, and the outline that uh, biology can be programmed predictably in the way that we write software and program computers and the tie-in of biological data with computing tools and AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. to the scale-up of production and the applications of biotechnology. This recognition that biotechnology and the ability to program biology can have broad-ranging impact and the importance of that to all of the various areas that Kevin mentioned uh, is very, very important. And the recognition at the top levels of the administration of this is uh, very, very important to 
uh, catalyzing our government as well as our private sector to work together to move uh, the nation forward in leadership in this area. It's quite long as as, uh, as executive orders go as well, and uh, and really kind of breathtaking in the scope. Um, the list of objectives runs to at least no fewer than twelve, as which, uh, and I'll I'll just cherry pick from among them. Uh, bolster and continue federal investment in key research and development areas of biotech and biomanufacturing. You seldom see those two words separated from each other. Biotech and biomanufacturing are closely linked all through this document. Um, expand biomanufacturing production capacity and processes and accelerate the translation of basic research results into practice. Incentives for American agricultural producers and forest landowners. You know, that's a that's a recognition that <clears throat> that uh, fundamentally biotechnology is powered by the sun, and the um, uh, as I'm fond of, of saying occasionally, um, there is no more productive bio reactor on Earth than the middle of the North American continent, uh, and so I think there's going to be a um, you know a significant role for U.S. agriculture in the bioeconomy as well. And that's called out at several places uh, throughout this as well. Um, I think the, the I think the yeah. executive order is uh, detailed um, for good reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. this is it's 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 called the National Biotech and Biomanufacturing Initiative, and um, the intent is clearly to accelerate America's transition to a whole new way of manufacturing and of creating products, products for all kinds of purposes from energy generation to um, health improvement um, to um, improving supply chain resilience. Um, it is also part of a national security strategy um, involving competition with China. Um, Hopefully, we will evolve. We will avoid a direct military competition with China, and in, in which case, um, the outcome of their authoritarian government versus our democratic government is going to depend largely on economic competition, and that economic competition is going to be largely about technology, um, and. It, biotechnology, as we all believe, is the main thrust of the future, then being competitive in biotechnology is an essential national security goal. And China recognizes this. China has designated biotech one of its seven strategically critical technologies and is investing heavily um, and people, products, and R and D to try to outcompete us in this realm. Yeah, that's correct, Tara. In addition to uh, identifying it as one of the top priorities uh, in their five-year plan, uh, the Chinese uh, private sector has also been investing heavily against advances in biotechnology, not only in uh, biotechnology as it relates to medicine and health uh, and advancing those capabilities, but also in the areas of agriculture uh, with respect to large acquisitions uh, such as Syngenta and uh, the collaboration between the private sector and the state government in biotechnologies and biology in general uh, should not be underestimated. The other subject that gets a lot of attention in um, this document is the importance of biotech and biomanufacturing for understanding um, and mitigating climate change and for reducing atmospheric carbon. Uh, the Secretary of Energy, for example, is tasked with um, submitting a plan for how we could use biomanufacturing, bioenergy, and bio-based products um, to under better understand the causes and uh, adapt to and mitigate climate change impacts, including by carbon sequestration. Um, 
Another issue that comes up repeatedly in this national biotech and biomanufacturing initiative is the need to pay attention to the workforce um, that's going to make this initiative happen and be the basis for American biomanufacturing. And it addresses not only increasing opportunities for people to get degrees in biotechnology, um, but it also emphasizes uh, the need to uh, create a biomanufacturing workforce through technical degrees in community colleges and so forth. So it's not just about the what, what they want to do. Uh, there's a lot in here about how uh, the administration proposes to do it. There's also quite a lot about just really understanding the bioeconomy, you know, measuring the bioeconomy uh, has its whole uh, own section. Uh, understanding what is the bioeconomy, how do we measure it, how do we understand it from an economic standpoint, uh, and then understand our progress against it is an important element to uh, to ensuring that we make the progress needed uh, and the advancements needed, uh, both as with respect to uh, these areas, but also uh, there are discussion or there is discussion as well around uh, biosafety and uh, risks and biosecurity. Yeah, absolutely. The, um, uh, the, the other thing that jumped out at me was the emphasis on data. Yeah, it's not just the, <clears throat> the, 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 uh, the discussions of biomanufacturing are not just about the building of the factories, uh, but of the uh, but a significant amount of this uh, document addresses the, the the need for the underlying data that will go into the de, the biological designs for products that will be manufactured, uh, and the need for that data to be uh, collated, managed, you know, curated, uh, and then ultimately secured. There's 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 a, a separate section on the security of the data as well, and the role of NIST in securing both the data and the software, uh, both the software that's used by, you know, by human users and also the software that's embedded in scientific equipment, which has uh, in past years perhaps uh, not had the, the, the kind of attention for security that, uh, that we are coming to understand is necessary. Yes, there's a whole section on the data for the bioeconomy initiative, uh, mm -hmm. which includes not only an analysis of the need for new data and for mechanisms for making it widely accessible, but also, as you said, uh, for ideas on how to I identify the security and privacy and other risks uh, embedded in such data and how to handle them. There's also a section on um, regulation and asking USDA, and FDA, and uh, the Department of Congress to make the regulations of new bioproducts more coherent and efficient. It's often difficult now to know which agency would regulate your product and uh, what they are trying to do is lower barriers to new products and make the regulatory apparatus um, much more um, understandable and efficient. Absolutely. Another way they're trying to grow the tent is um detailed under a section that is uh, entitled Building a Vibrant Domestic Biomanufacturing Ecosystem. And that speaks directly to, uh, to infrastructure and shared resources that, uh, that uh, for instance, biofoundries, um, <clears throat> uh, the, um, the connections between the biomanufacturing supply chain and, uh, and development infrastructure, the access for small companies to potentially you know, uh, otherwise unobtainable um, uh, or uh, unaccessible um, uh, infrastructure for prototyping one's bioproduct. Uh, the, the capital costs of, of bioproduction equipment are sometimes uh, pretty high. And the, the ability of uh, the government to support the establishment and the running of biofoundries where innovators can come and bring products, have them made uh, at, at, uh, at prototype scale uh, to to further characterize the economics of of bringing a product to market is is going to be really important. And let's not forget the uh, the notion or the importance of uh, 
uh, the global aspect or the international aspect as it relates to uh, both bioeconomy and mm -hmm. biological R&D, uh, which is very much happening across uh, the world and in a very interconnected way. Uh, so there is a section describing, importantly, uh, international engagement and uh, encouraging the Department of State and other agencies to work with international partners, specifically developing countries, international organizations, and non-governmental entities around cooperation, uh, open sharing of scientific data, uh, and understanding uh, any threats related to the bioeconomy uh, as it relates to supply chains or national security threats. Yeah, that's the 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 uh, mandate uh, to uh, the director of national intelligence to assess the threats to the U.S. bioeconomy is sort of the bookends to this um, uh, collaboration with allies uh, call. Um, the document asks the DNI to um, provide a classified assessment of how foreign adversaries might try and um, either steal intellectual property from the bioeconomy or otherwise uh, disrupt progress um, and how we might, um, you know, counter uh, such threats. You know, a lot of people um, uh, believe that the United States ought not to have a strategic technology plan. Uh, that we ought to let the market do its thing and allow market efficiency to power innovation. And there's a certain amount of truth to that, but in, in today's climate where we are in direct competition with China, um, I think it is imperative that the government state uh, what it thinks is important for national security and help organize markets in the private sector to be more efficient and get to success much more rapidly than markets on their own might do. Um, and I think this EO is a great example of how government can lead by example and actually accelerate and turbocharge the innovation of America's private sector. Um, and universities in biotech and biomanufacturing. So Tara, before, as we were preparing for this uh, podcast, we, uh, we talked about a particular form of government leadership in markets that is called out specifically here. Do you wanna talk a little bit about the government as a market maker or becoming a leading market? Well, the EO includes a section in which it tells the Department of Defense to figure out um, what bioproducts, what bio-based products that are derived from biomanufacturing it is using today, and then do, it all, do all it can to shift DOD to more bioproducts, which are generally much greener, cause less pollution um, than um, traditional products. Um, and it's, it's it's clearly going to try, I mean, DOD obviously is one of the biggest buyers of stuff in the US government, so that's a good place to start. But I think what, it, what the EO is signaling is that here too, um, it's gonna lead by government example and um, motivate the federal agencies to move to bio-based products when feasible. You know, it's fascinating also to see that in that same in that same uh, area of the order, the Secretary of Agriculture is uh, directed to uh, survey across government and uh, ask agencies what products they cannot get that are bio based, and then to promulgate that information, that knowledge, which you know, which further incents industry to maybe come up with solutions that would meet those needs. Yeah, this is, I think this, these parts of the executive order are important for two reasons. First of all, as you say, the government is going to try and make a market. It's, it's signaling the private sector that if they make good bioproducts, the government will be interested in buying them. Um, and the second thing it's doing is beginning to um, 
try and build resilience into supply chains of all kinds. I mean, synthetic biology, for example, has the potential to make virtually everything that now comes from petroleum products and to do it in America. Um, so supply chain resilience, I think, has been um, a, a big priority uh, for the administration and for past administrations. Um, and, and that importance has been brought home particularly by COVID. Um, so this CEO recognizes how biomanufacturing might actually uh, greatly improve our, um, the strength of our supply chains and give us alternative products that we could use for stuff that's made overseas or from polluting materials and processes. And to that end, two days after the executive order was issued on September 14th, uh, the White House held a summit on biotechnology and biomanufacturing, and a number of the various agencies uh, involved announced uh, a number of awards and uh, funding efforts are related to uh, the executive order. And the DOD uh, announced its uh, intent to invest a billion dollars in bioindustrial domestic manufacturing infrastructure over the next five years to catalyze uh, that bioindustrial manufacturing base uh, in support of uh, supply chain resilience. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, <clears throat> back to the to the the feedstock that un, that will underpin all of this biomanufacturing, um, the the order further asks the Secretary of Agriculture to submit a plan to the President uh, to support the resilience of U.S of the US biomass supply chain. So basically the very raw materials that would feed that bioeconomy uh, for domestic biomanufacturing and bio-based product manufacturing. This is akin to asking 50 years ago, um, asking the Secretary of Energy, which, which was created after 50 years ago, but you get the point, um, to, uh, to lay out the plan for securing the supply chain for petroleum. Uh, it's really quite a profound statement, and uh, and I think that um, I think that uh, that's not highlighted so much in the document that that one, but that did jump out at me when I read it. Um, the there is a vision here for really transforming American industry and leading the globe in doing so. We're coming close to the end of our time. Uh, Tara and Eugene, do you have any uh, final thoughts or conclusions you'd like to share? Well, I, I just say that both IQT and our group, Be Next, have been um, asking uh, for more visionary and aggressive pursuit of biotechnologies, um, both for economic growth and also for national security reasons for a long time now. So I think this executive order is actually a very important inflection point um, and actually recognizing how important the bioeconomy is going to be in the future. Absolutely. I'm excited about the future here with the emphasis around biotechnology and biomanufacturing that this executive order has put uh, with respect to the U.S. government's interest in these areas and the opportunity that it provides for greater collaboration with the private sector where InQtel and BNext can be helpful. And my last thought will be uh, to invite folks to have a look at IQT.org particularly uh, because we have just released a blog post there about our interest in synthetic biology uh, that was released on uh, September the 20th. We thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the IQT podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to the IQT podcast so you don't miss out on future content and leave us a review or comment to let us know what you think or what content you'd be interested to see us cover on a future podcast. I also encourage you to check out IQT's website at www.iqt.org and the BNEXT website, www.bnextbnext.org to explore more content about cutting edge technology, including biotech, to support and deliver insights and capabilities essential for national security mission impact. Thank you very much.
produced by Heartcast Media.